Happy birthday, Mamon. Did you know our relationship spans nearly 30 years? And I'm sure at times that seems like an eternity to you, but it seems like yesterday to me. But what I've come to know about you in that time period is you are a lot of fun, you're supportive, you're committed, you're forgiving, you're loyal, and you're most definitely faithful. And what I most admire about you is the role model that you played for our children. You've shown them an amazing path to follow through your charitable works and your commitment to your community. And for that, I thank you because those are the things that count in life. So thanks for being you. We love you very much. And we look forward to the celebration. You deserve to be celebrated. Cheers. Mom, I think everybody here knows you well enough to know that you were a pretty strict mom when we were growing up. I mean, no earrings, no jeans, no R-rated movies or swearing. You know, that was tough stuff for a 13-year-old. But the one thing is you always knew how to have fun. Uh, I remember one of my stories is when we were all piled into the back of the old Buick station wagon heading up to Saratoga on a hot summer day and uh, we look out and across the throughway there's a train running alongside the road and we say mom mom how fast is the train going and you say gee I don't know let's find out <clears throat> pedal to the metal next thing you know we're zooming alongside the train and there are lights behind us and there's a state trooper. I think trooper. everybody here knows you well enough to know that you were a really strict mother when we were growing up. I mean, no earrings, no jeans, uh, no swearing or R-rated movies. You know, that was tough stuff for a 13-year-old. But I will have to say that you still knew how to have fun. And that reminds me of one of my favorite stories of when we were all piled into the old Buick station wagon heading to Saratoga on a hot August morning. And all of a sudden we notice this train that's running alongside the throughway. And we say, mom, mom, how fast is the train going? And you say, hmm, I don't know, let's see. Mm, pedal to the metal, you gun it. Next thing you know, we see lights behind us and you're being pulled over by a straight state trooper. Uh, ma'am, do you have any idea how fast you were going? Well, no, officer, but the kids wanted to know how fast the train was going. Well, the train was going 82 miles an hour, and so were you. Uh, <laughs> it just went downhill from there, I can tell you that. Uh, another one of my favorites is when I begged you, begged you, begged you my junior year in college, please, can I go to Fort Lauderdale for spring break? All my friends are going. Everybody's doing it. No, no, no. Well, finally, I think I talk you into it and you say, well, you can go, but I'm gonna come with you. Well, I figure that's better than not being able to go at all. So we get off the plane in Fort Lauderdale and do we head to the beach and the parties? No, we head to the spa where we spend the week eating uh, next to nothing and exercising. So, uh, you know, they say wisdom comes with age, but I would say you've always pretty much been a wise guy. 
So happy 80th birthday, Mom. I love you. And here's to being 80 years young. Mwah. Yeah, but I'm recording the next one now, so shh. Noreen Real Falcone was born on February 17, 1937, in Syracuse, New York, as one of the youngest, as the youngest of five children born to Sue and Joe Reale. It has been said that her older siblings, Sonny, Rosemary, Barbara, and Junior, spoiled her rotten. In 1950, she enrolled at the Covenant School in Syracuse, where she attended high school, initially thinking that perhaps a life in the service of God was her calling. However, thank goodness for all of us, this was not to be the case. She would graduate from high school and go on to enroll at Lemoyne College, where she was a member of the first class in the history of the school to admit women. Although the women's rights movement had laid groundwork for bridging the gap between men and women, it was still not a priority for many women to attend college, and Grandma was the first woman in her family to do so. Grandma excelled with flying colors, and in 1958, after graduating from Lemoyne, she enrolled in graduate studies at Oswego State Teachers College and would later finish at Syracuse University and become a first grade teacher at the Bear Road Elementary School in North Syracuse. On April 23, 1960, after much cajoling and courting, she would go on to marry the love of her life, Michael J. Falcone. They have four children, Michael, Mark, Melissa, and Michelle. Building a loving family and instilling her strong beliefs and high moral values in her children wasn't enough for Grandma. Though working in the traditional workforce after starting her family was not possible, she did put all her extra time and effort into volunteer work of all kinds. Whether it was Meals on Wheels, the American Cancer Society, the Everson Museum, the Corinthian Foundation, teaching religious ed, or the Syracuse Opera Club, she put in more time and effort than just about anyone would and would go on to receive significant awards and achievements throughout her other professional career. From the Woman of Achievement Award in 1983 to her Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters in 1995, to becoming the first woman to be a president of the National Association of the Knights of Malta in its over 600-year history, she has never hesitated to give more of herself for the things she believed in. Grandma has received too many accolades to name here, but her education to service, her dedication to service has instilled a strong sense of purpose and values in all of us, and her belief and work in her faith has been touched by literally thousands. Today, our family has grown significantly, and she is the very proud grandmother to 12 spectacular grandchildren, Sonia, Luke, Olivia, Michael, Nathan, Isabella, Angelia, Severia, Amelia, Gabriella, Julia, and Allison. In addition, she will now have the complete baker's dozen come July. As we grow older, we want to acknowledge both her sacrifices and successes and how these things have impacted and shaped our family. We're so happy to celebrate this special day with you and all of us together. Happy 80th birthday, Grandma. We love you. Happy birthday, Grandma. We love you. Thank you so much for always taking care of Callie and, and Astro and all of our other four-legged friends. Favorite childhood memory? That is impossible because I have so, so, so very many. But... There wasn't a moment, there wasn't an important thing that I ever did at any point in my childhood that Grandma wasn't there as a witness and as my biggest fan, and that I will never forget. Happy 80th birthday, Mom. I love you more than you will ever know. As far as inspiration goes, I would say absolutely everything that Grandma, Mom did was an inspiration. You were an incredible mother, an incredible grandmother. I've sought to emulate you as a mom. I don't think I've come anywhere close, but I try. You were an amazing model of someone who worked really hard for everything you believed in, worked really hard for all sorts of different causes, um, far above and beyond what most normal people would do. and. You continue to inspire me every day. I, I feel like I constantly need to step it up. I think in my community, I, I don't do nearly enough, and that's partly because I'm measuring myself by you. So anyway, I love you. 
I think I was most inspired by Grandma when she became the president of Malta. I thought that, that was that was so cool, and it was such she did so much work for it, and still well, she still does so much work for Malta, but she like worked so hard and. I really looked up to her in that moment and I think everything that she does with everything she helps with she always like gives her full effort and all of her time and I think that there's a lot to be said for that. My favorite memory is when Gabby and I were in Leck and Grandma wanted to um, help us come up with a present for Uncle Mark like a prank present and we decided that we wanted to give him poop as a present in like a fancy box and we thought horse poop was a good idea so we went on a horse carriage ride just so that we could get the poop afterwards and so at the end of the ride the the um, horse carriage driver who didn't really speak English grandma was trying to ask him if we could have some of the poop because the horses have a bag under them that collects all the poop and we kept asking like oh like you know poo 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 and <laughs> the man did not understand us at all so grandma turned around and like pointed to her butt and was like poo 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 horse poo poo okay <laughs> stop happy 80th birthday grandma you're the best grandma ever i love you so much that you do so much for everybody and I wish you didn't go to Florida every winter. You're going way too long, and I miss you way too much when you're gone. So please come back sooner. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you. Noreen Riali Falcone was born on February 17, 1937, in Syracuse, New York. Her parents, Azunta, or Sue as she was known, and Joe Riali had five children. Noreen was the baby. Her older siblings, Sunny, Rosemary, Barbara, and Junior all spoiled her rotten. In 1950, she enrolled at the convent school, an all-girls Catholic high school in the north side of Syracuse. According to legend, she thought that a life of service of God might be her calling. <laughs> However, was not to be the case, at least not quite so directly, because Grandma's not a nun. Grandma, you've impacted my life in so many ways, but I think that uh, one of the main ways that you've inspired me and shaped me into the person that I am today is through your devotion to God and helping others. Having a grandma who is the first female president of a society dedicated to helping others has been so inspiring to me. And um, going to church with you and volunteering ever since I can remember and having balls at your house for the veterans and going to shelters has just made such an impact in my life and has taught me that there's just so many ways that we can give back and so many ways that we can touch lives of others and you have a sign in your uh, kitchen actually that says what you are is God's gift to you but what you make of yourself is your gift to God and I think that you have been completely successful in that and if I can touch half the people that you have in your life then I know that I've been successful too. Grandma, you've impacted my life in so many ways, but I think that uh, one of the main ways that you've inspired me and shaped me into the person that I am today is through your devotion to God and helping others. Having a grandma who is the first female president of a society dedicated to helping others has been so inspiring to me. And um, going to church with you and volunteering ever since I can remember and having balls at your house for the veterans and going to shelters has just made such an impact in my life and has taught me that there's just so many ways that we can give back and so many ways that we can touch lives of others and you have a sign in your uh, kitchen actually that says what you are is God's gift to you but what you make of yourself is your gift to God and I think that you have been completely successful in that and if I can touch half the people that you have in your life then I know that I've been successful too. Some of my favorite memories growing up is getting to take those amazing trips every other winter and I don't think what makes them so special to me is the food that we've tasted or the views we've seen or the fun shopping trips 
but it's getting to spend two weeks surrounded by love and a family that just is so incredible and a grandmother who just loves each and every one of us so much. Hooray, 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 today is your birthday. Not for beavers, not for bears, not for pickles, not for pears, not last week or yesterday. Hooray, today is your birthday. Woo, Grandma, I love you so much and I'm so lucky I get to spend it with you. Hi, videographer. My name's Sonia Falcone. I'm in LA. I'm Mark's daughter. Okay. I actually have two favorite memories of Grandma. Um, my first memory is short and sweet, but it's when I was with Olivia and the two of us were with Grandma shopping at a mall in Arizona. It was just the three of us together. And I'll never forget, Olivia saw a St. John across the mall and she said, Grandma, what's St. John? And Grandma said, oh, it's a very nice store, Olivia. Grandma shops there a lot. And Olivia said, oh, so it's an old lady store? And Grandma took the plastic water bottle that she was drinking out of and dumped the entire thing all over Olivia's head in the middle of the store. <laughs> I will never forget that. Um, my second favorite memory of Grandma is when I was a senior and I was moving into my senior apartment at Colgate. And I was taking a bunch of furniture from the barn, just a classic Grandmaism that my entire college apartment was outfitted with her old furniture. Um, and I had offered to come pick up all the furniture from borrow a friend's car and come pick it all up. And Grandma said, no, 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 I want to come see your new place. I'll drop it off. I'll get some of the guys from the farm to come. So <laughs> Grandma tells me that she's showing up and my roommates and I come down to the street and there is an enormous U-Haul, like not one of those little U-Hauls that you use to, to move into a new apartment, like a U-Haul the size of a city block coming through Hamilton, New York. And Paul's driving, and in the front seat is Grandma, and on her lap is Duchess with two red bows in her ears, just looking so Duchess. So they pull up in the U-Haul, and they go to bring all the furniture in, but the couch won't fit in the front door. And so we're so distressed. We don't know what we're going to do. This is kind of the critical piece of furniture. And while everyone's having lunch, Grandma sneaks away to Tractor Supply Company and picks up a pulley and has the idea to put the pulley over our fire escape and crank this couch in through the fire escape and through the back door. And God bless her, it worked. That couch is probably still in that apartment. I don't know how they'll ever get it out, but I will never forget Grandma coming down the street in that U-Haul with Duchess on her lap coming back from Tractor Supply Company. Um, Grandma, I think the thing that I've learned the most from you is that it's important, you and Papa are both so generous, but what I've learned is that it's not only to be important to be generous with your resources, but it's mostly important to be generous with your time. And I think that's what you've taught us. You've taught us not only to be, that it's important to show up for our family members, that it's important to be there at all the important moments. Um, and that it's important to just be there for dinner because if you are, if you, Anybody can write a check and anybody can um, buy a present for someone. But what really shows how much you love someone is that when, is when you're physically there with them, when you're playing cards with them at 2 in the morning, when you're cooking a meal for them, when you're hearing them talk, when you're talking about their, their experiences. That's what it means to really love someone and really be generous with them. And I've learned that from you. So happy 80th birthday, Grandma. I love you so much. You are, the, um, you are the rock that holds our family together, and we all love you so much. Happy birthday, Grandma. Happy birthday. <laughs> Wait, come in. Come in. Let's do it one together. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Grandma. Happy <laughs> birthday. Okay. Noreen Real Falcone was born on February 17, 1937, in Syracuse, New York, as the youngest of five children born to Sue and Joe Real. It was said that her older siblings, Sonny, Rosemary, Barbara, and Junior, spoiled her rotten. In 1950, she enrolled at the Covenant School in Syracuse, where she attended high school, initially thinking that perhaps a life in the service of God was her calling. However, this was not to be the case. She would graduate from high school and go on to enroll at Lemoyne College, where she was a member of the first class in history of the school to admit women. Although the women's rights movement had laid groundwork for bridging the gap between men and women, it was still not a priority for many women to attend college, and Grandma was the first woman in her family to do so. Grandma Noreen excelled with flying colors, and in 1958, after graduating from Le Moyne, she enrolled in graduate studies at Oswego State Teachers College, and would later finish at Syracuse University and become a first grade teacher at the Bear Road Elementary School in North Syracuse.
on April 23, 1960, after much cajoling and courting, she would go on to marry the love of her life, Michael J. Falcone. They had four children, Michael, Mark, Michelle, and Melissa. Building a loving family and instilling her strong beliefs and high moral values in her children wasn't enough for Grandma. Though working in the traditional workforce after starting her family was not possible, she did put all her extra time and effort into volunteer work of all kinds. Whether it was Meals on Wheels, the American Cancer Society, the Everson Museum, the Corinthian Foundation, Teaching Religious Ed, or the Syracuse Opera Club, she put in more time and effort than just about anyone would, and would go on to receive significant awards and achievements throughout her other professional career. From the Women of Achievement Award in 1983, to her Honorary Doctor of Humane Letters in 1995, or to becoming the first woman to become President of the National Association of the Knights of Malta in its over 600 year history. She never hesitated to give more of herself for the things she believed in. Grandma has received too many accolades to name here, but her dedication to service was instilled, has instilled a strong sense of purpose and values in all of us, and her belief and work in her in her faith has been touched by literally thousands. Today, our family has grown significantly, and she is the very proud grandmother of 12 sp spectacular grandchildren, Sonia, Luke, Olivia, Michael, Nathan, Isabella, Angelia, Severia, Amelia, Gabriella, Julia, Allison. In addition, she will now have the complete baker's dozen come July. As we grow older, we want to acknowledge Excuse me. As we grow old, as we grow older, we wanted to acknowledge both her sacrifices and successes, and how these things have impacted and shaped our family. We're so happy to celebrate this special day with you and all of us together. Happy 80th birthday, Grandma! We love you. I think the ways in which Grandma has inspired and impacted people over the years is pretty far-reaching and vast. And for me, I think one that's closest to home and that is usually overlooked is uh, grandma has an innate ability to seek out and find mischief and fun and uh, you know if you're at an event or a party and you find the most bombastic loudest excited group grandma is is without fail at the center of all that with this signature twinkle in her eye um, and what, you know, it's led to a number of friendships and, and events, whether it's Carl Hines or, you know, incidents with fireworks or <laughs> anything like that. Grandma is always kind of at the life of the party. And one of my favorite things about her is she has an ability to share that. And, and, in, and involve the people around her in that in a way that's truly unique and inspiring. Um, one of my favorite childhood memories from Grandma is uh, Sonia and I took a trip with Grandma and Papa to Paris. Um, and I can remember we were, we were pretty young. I think I was in like second grade. And we were shopping around all day. And I think Grandma could tell that I was getting to a point that you know, I was done. Sonia could shop. She could keep going, no problem. But she turned to me and she said, you know what? You and me, we're going to go get some french fries. And I said, this is, this is my grandma. We get it. <laughs> um, I think as a, I just want to say, grandma, happy birthday. Um, I think the ways in which you have impacted all of your grandchildren's lives and the lives of many, many others around you, but we're most important, so that's all that matters. But the way that you've impacted our lives, I don't think you'll ever know how, how strong your influence is on all of us. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about all that you've given to me and what I can do to give back to the world in the same light. And so thank you and happy birthday and we love you so much.